Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Zhong. Today I'm going to share with you how to create a particle advection animation using the new simulation node in Blender 3.6 geometry nodes. Alright, so before we jump into Blender, let me walk you through what we are going to do in this video. So first, I will start by showing you the basic concept of how simulation work in geometry nodes. Once we have understand the basic, we can proceed to create our particles emitter in geometry nodes. Then we need to add randomness to the points to make it look natural. Then we will define a zone for the particle emitter and we will kill any particle that goes outside of the zone. Then we will duplicate the emitter and configure it to emit particle outward from the center. After complete the particle simulation, we will add camera, lighting and material to finish the scene. Okay, so this video will be very basic and simple. So without further ado, let's get started. Before we dive into creating the artwork, let me quickly go through how the simulation work in geometry nodes. So select the cube, go to geometry node, add a new geometry node, delete the light and camera. We don't need it for now. Okay, then add simulation zone. So this is very straightforward. This is our geometry, which is the cube. When we connect it to the simulation input, any action added within this simulation zone will continue to loop indefinitely and it will output the simulation to the group output. So now, let's try to add a set position here. Press numpad 1 to see the top view. Currently, the queue is 2 meter by 2 meter. That means one grid is 1 meter. So now, if we add 1 meter to the x-axis in set position, and in the timeline, hold alternate and scroll your mouse, you can see the queue move 1 meter for each frame. That means the simulation zone make the cube repeatedly move 1 meter toward x axis for each loop. In this case, each loop also represents 1 frame. So basically, this is how it works. Now, let's start to create the artwork. First, we need to create an emitter. So let's delete the set position. Disconnect the geometry input as well because we are not going to manipulate the geometry. Add a grid. Add the distribute point on face. So what it does here is, we are distribute point on this grid. Then, add a joint geometry in between the simulation zone. Connect our point to the joint geometry. So when we connect it to the joint geometry in the simulation zone, it will make this distribute point on face to keep produce 10 density of point every single frame. So now we have 10 points. Let's hit play to see the result. So you can see after we hit play, now the point has increased, but it seems like nothing happened in our viewport. The reason is because we are now keep produce the point at the same position on the grid and all the points are currently overlapping together. So to make the point produce at the different position of the grid, we need to have different seed value for every frame. So let's add a scene time node and connect the frame to the seed. Now if we hit play again, we can see the emitter keep produce point at the same position on the grid, but the particle are stuck in here and not shooting out. So to fix this, let's add the set position after the joint geometry. Let's put 0 0.008 for the G axis. You can put any number you like. It depends on how fast you want it to be. If you want the particles to shooting up, you need to put a positive number. If you want it to shooting down, you need to put a negative number. Then extend the final frame to 1000 maybe. Hit play again to check the result. Okay, now the point is keep shooting up, but we can see they are just moving at a constant velocity. So if we want to add something like acceleration, we need a store name attribute. Set this to vector. Add a name attribute here. And name both of them velocity. Plug this to value slot. Shift right click and drag to tie two of this line. Then add a vector math. Put 0 0.008. So again, if you want the particle to shooting up, we can use add. If we want it to shooting down, we need to use subtract. Okay, 
hit play again to see the result. Okay, now we can see the particles are moving very slow in the beginning and then start to speed up and this is what we want. Not sure if you notice, our particles are moving in a quite uniform way. A lot of them are moving up together at the same line. So to fix this issue, let's add another set position after the distribute point on face. Add a random value. Set it to vector. Connect it to offset in set position. Put minus 0.8 for minimum Z axis. Put 0.8 for maximum Z axis. And put 0 for the X and Y axis. Connect the frame to the seat. Reset the timeline. Hit play again. Okay, we solve it. So we have done the basic particle emitter. Before go to next step, let's tidy up all this node. Okay, next, when the particle shooting out, I want to make the particles expand outward at the end. So to do that, let's add another set position before the simulation output. Then we need to get the position of all the points. Then we also need a vector math node. Set it to scale. Put 1.05 maybe, you can experiment with this value yourself. Okay, hit play again to see the result. Let's increase the density of the particles so we are easy to see. So now we can see the particles is expanding outward. Next, I want to further randomize the position of the particles to make it look natural. So to do that, let's add another vector map here. Set it to multiply. Add a mask grip texture. Connect it to multiply. Set this to 4D. Set this to multi fractal. Put 1 for the scale. Put 2 for the details. Put 0 for 2 of these. You can experiment this yourself with the value you want. Check the result. This is good, but I think we can improve the animation by adding a scene time node. Connect the frame to the W. Check the result again. The animation is too fast. Let's add a math node. Set it to divide. Let's divide 40 to slow it down. Check the result again. Okay, I think this is better. Okay, now let's frame all this node. Name it Randomized Particle Movement. Okay, next, in the 3D viewport, if we zoom out, we can see the particles are shooting up until like infinity. We can't even see the end. So obviously, we don't want this to happen because when it produces more and more new particles without remove the old particles at the same time, it will take a lot of our computer memory to run it. So to solve this issue, what we need to do is, we will define a zone for the particle emitter and we will kill any particle that goes outside of the zone. Let's add a delete geometry after the simulation output. Then we need to get the position of all the points. Then we need to get the length. Then add a compare node. Set it to greater than. Hit play and start to increase the B value.
I think 26.9 is good for me. So what we are doing here is, we are telling Blender to delete all the points that outside of 26.9 mm from the center. Okay, let's frame all this node. Name it Delete Particles. Next, I want to clone this particle on a hexagon. I want to make it look like the particle are shooting out from the center. So let's add a curve circle and connect it to the group output. Decrease the resolution to 6. Then add an instant on point node. Connect our particle to the instance. Then we need to rotate it. Let's add a line euler to vector. Add normal and connect it to the vector. Add a transform node before the instant on point. We need to rotate our particles 90 degree y axis. Currently, there are a lot of particles overlapping each other at the center. To solve this, we can try to adjust the grid size, which is the emitter size. Let's try 0.63 and 4. Scale down the instant object to 0.3 maybe. Scale this up to 1.3 maybe. Play the animation to check the result. Okay, this is good for me. Let's frame all this node. Name it clone emitter. Now, if we play the animation, we can see currently the particle is start shooting out at frame 1. But this is not what I want. I want to delay the starting time to maybe around frame 60. So to do that, let's go back to the particle emitter section at the beginning. Add a compare node. Set it to greater than 60. Then add a switch node. Set it to float. Put 120 for true. Connect it to density. That means when the animation reaches 60 frames or more, the density of the point is 120. And before the animation reaches 60 frames, the density is 0. Okay, let's reset the animation and play again to see the result. So not sure if you notice, at frame 60, the point is suddenly come in and start shooting. I think this is too fast. I want the point to slowly scale up from 0 to the size we want. So let's add a set point radius before the clone emitter section. Drag time indicator to 60. Put 0 for the radius. Hover and press I to add a keyframe. Drag time indicator to 80. Put 0 0.01 for the radius. Hover and press I to add another keyframe. Okay, next, we can start to add material. So let's go to Render Properties tab. Change the Render Engine to Cycles. Change the device to GPU. Then we can also decrease the Max Sample for Render to 200 so that it render faster. Turn on the Render Preview mode. Then go to the Material tab. Rename the material to Particles. In the Geometry Node Editor, add a Set Material Node after the Delete Particles. Select Particles. Go to Shader Editor. Press Home button to see the node. Delete the Principal Node. We don't need it anymore. Then, add an Emission Node. Connect it to Surface. Then, we need a Color Ramp because we want to add Gradient Color onto it. 
Then we need a texture coordinate that connect to generated. So now we can start to add color we want into this color ramp. You can put any color you like. You don't really need to follow me. I think we can also increase the emission to 4 maybe. Then let's turn the background color to black. Okay, next I want to add this abstract sci fi particles device to the scene. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure what should I call this. Just treat it as a device for decoration purpose in this scene. So I'm going to quickly go through this modeling since it is very basic modeling. And if you don't want to model this yourself, you can download the file in the description below. So let's turn off the render preview. Go to the layout tab. I think we can hide the outline. Then rename this particle emitter. Hide it for now. Press numpad 1 to see the top view. Add a mesh circle. Decrease the vertices to 6. Then we want to fill with and gone. Rotate the G axis 30 degree. Go into edit mode. Switch selection mode to face. You can press here or you can press 3 as well. Select the face. Press number 3 to see the side view. Press E to extrude it. Make the height around 0 0.035 maybe. Press number 7 to see the top view. Select this face on the top and press I to insert faces. Put the thickness around 0 0.05 maybe. Extrude it again. Make it around 0 0.06. Inset faces again. Make it around 0 0.05. Inset faces again. Make it around 0 0.04 maybe. Inset again. 0 0.05. Select this row of polygon. Press number 3 to see the side view. Press alternate G to turn on X-ray mode. Then extrude it downward. Select the face at the center. Press number 3 to see the side view. Extrude it again. Inset face. 0 0.01 maybe. Press Shift D and followed by G to duplicate it. Move it down to around 0 0.04. Press P to separate it. Exit Edit Mode. Select it again. Go into Edit Mode again. Select the face. Extrude it. Make it around 0 0.12 maybe. Select this face. Insert faces again. Put 0 0.045. Select other face to do the same. Select all this face. Press S followed by G. Scale it bigger. 1.85 maybe. Press E to extrude. Minus 0 0.05 maybe. Press S to scale it invert. Let's select all these edges. I think we can add some details onto it. Press Ctrl B to bevel it. Put 0 0.015. Exit edit mode. I want to add detail for this one as well. Hold alternate and select two of this row. Press Ctrl B 
to beaver it. Exit edit mode. Then let's add even more detail onto it. Hide this for now. Let's turn on the wireframe so that we are easy to see. Add a cube, press S, and followed by 0 0.05 to scale it. Move it. Press S followed by Y and press 5 to scale it longer. Press S followed by G and followed by 3 to scale it higher. Duplicate another one and put it here. Don't have to be very precise, just put it there. Duplicate again. You can use mirror if you want. Press Ctrl J to join all of them together. Then I'm going to use both tools to boolean them. You need to activate this add-on before we continue. Select both of these. Go to Edit tab, both tools, and click Difference. So now let's add even more detail onto it. Then extrude it. Exit edit mode. Go to object. Set origin. Set origin to geometry. Then we need to add a solidify modifier. Then press numpad 7 to see the top view. Move this to the corner. Add a ray modifier. I think we can add a little bit of curve to the edge. Go into edit mode. Select three of this edge. Press Ctrl B to beaver it. Press numpad 3 to see the side view. Okay, everything is good. Then we can start to mirror it to other side. So let's add a mirror modifier. For the mirror object, let's select this hexagon. Duplicate this one. Untick the Y axis. Rotate it. Okay, now let's add a lot more details onto this. Go into edit mode. Duplicate this face. Press P to separate it. Set origin to geometry. Then move it down. Go into edit mode. Select this face and insert it. Select 6 of these faces, extrude them, exit edit mode, press numpad 7 to see the top view. Let's add some detail here, add a cube again, Ctrl A and apply the scale, go into edit mode. Press Ctrl R and add two loop cut. Scale down the loop cut. Then let's extrude this. Extrude it again. Exit edit mode. Then we want to mirror this. Again, duplicate this. 
untick y axis rotate it then apply the modifier apply this as well select both of them press ctrl j to join it together then select both of these go to edit and press difference i think we need some adjustment for this let's undo let's click the difference in brush boolean so that we can adjust it okay i think this is good for me then let's apply the brush apply all then we can delete this then go into edit mode select this point press ctrl shift b to bevel it let's decrease the segment to one then select this face press i to insert it then extrude it again so now we need to make the cover so exit edit mode press numpad 7 to see the top view add another circle decrease the vertices to 6 turn g axis 30 degree then scale it down 0.66 is good for me fill tab we need to fill with end gone move it up then go into edit mode extrude it again select all this point Press Ctrl Shift B to bevel it again. Exit edit mode. Okay, now I want to add some icon on top of the cover. I'm going to draw a few circle onto it. So let's add a cylinder. Scale it down. Go into edit mode, select the top and bottom, inset it, right click and choose bridge faces, exit edit mode, duplicate a few more, then move them downward. Make sure they are at the same line. Select three of them and press Ctrl J to join them. Select the cover. Then boolean it. Then I think we can also add a plane as a floor. Unhide the particle emitter. Okay, next we can start to add lighting and material. Turn on the render preview again. Let's add a point light. Let's increase the power to 1000 maybe. I think we can turn off the wireframe. Let's increase the radius to 1 so that the shadow is softer. Then duplicate the point light. Let's decrease the power to 32 maybe. Okay, now we can start to add material. Let's add black color for this plane. Go to the shading tab.
decrease the specular to 0 0.150 maybe and increase the roughness to 0.8 maybe then add a blue color for this let's add a beaver node as well Select this layer, add a new material, then select two of these, press Ctrl L and link material. Then let's add gold color for this one. Select two of these, press Ctrl L again, link material. For this one, I think we can make it thicker as well. Go to solidify, increase the thickness to 0 0.01 maybe. Add a little bit beaver as well. Then, do the same thing for this. Then add black color for the cover. Link two of this material. Add white color for the icon. Increase the strength to egg maybe. Then copy the gold color here. I want to add gold color for this. Okay, now turn off the render preview for now. Let's add a camera. Press Ctrl Alternate 0 to frame the view. Increase the focal length to 80. Move it backward a little bit. Then I also want to add depth of view. So let's add an empty sphere. Move it forward. Rename it focus point. Go to camera. Take that of view. Select the focus point as our focus object. Decrease the f stop to 0.1. Okay, now finally we done it. So if you like my video, please subscribe and see you in the next video. Bye.